gradually people could understand and and I would uh, um, thank the leaders of Tumba, these leaders starting from council to federal start at MP and so on, mm. and especially the religious leaders mm. uh, of different faith, mm -hmm. not only just one or two faith, every faith in Tumba. Mm. They made a huge difference in Tumba. You're listening to Who Is My Neighbour? a podcast by You Belong Australia. Each episode, you'll join with Sorgal and Warren to meet some of Australia's newest neighbours. You'll hear their stories, listen to their hopes and dreams, and discover the incredible courage and inspiration they bring to our communities and richly diverse Australian culture. You'll also learn from some more established Aussies too and the joy they've found living and working alongside our refugee and migrant background neighbours. Welcome to another episode of Who Is My Neighbour? Today we're going to speak with Shah Jahan Khan, Professor Khan, who is a Professor of Statistics at the University of Southern Queensland and also the President of the Islamic Society and involved in a lot of different uh, community interfaith mm -hmm. and, and multicultural uh, events happening up here in Queensland. So it'll be really interesting to hear his perspective. Yep. He's come not as a refugee but as a skilled migrant. Mm -hmm. so. Well, we hope you enjoy listening to his story. Shah Jahan, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you. Now to start off, we could you please tell us a little bit about you, where you come from, and when you arrived in Australia? Oh, actually, we came to Australia from Canada. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of my PhD program, one of my friends told me that Australia is giving me skilled migration, so mm -hmm. why not you try? Um, that time, the application fee was $200. Now it's for one person, that was for the whole family, yeah. for five of us. Now it's for one person, if you sponsor your spouse, is more than $7,000. Yeah. So I said, no, $200, I can do something <laughs> better. <laughs> My wife said, no, 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 I'll give you $200. <laughs> we want to go to Australia. So then we applied, and surprisingly, we got a visa less than three months. Wow. Now, people that applied um, just before me or just after me, they took two, three years to get the visa. Mm -hmm. You were so lucky. <laughs> we were very lucky that we got a visa so quickly. Mm -hmm. And then we, uh, I'm originally from Bangladesh, so I'm going to go to Bangladesh. And um, the requirement of the visa validity is you have to enter Australia mm -hmm. and stamp the uh, passport. So it'll be valid for five years. But the, you have to enter within given time, six yeah. months or something. So I thought if I go to Bangladesh, and I may not be able to go to Australia on time for five or six months to get my uh, passport stamp. So better we go via Australia, mm -hmm. get passport stamp, and then we go to Bangladesh. So that's mm -hmm. what we did. Okay. Um, so we were for two days in Sydney, get the passport stamped, and then uh, went back to Bangladesh. Okay. Uh, that was um, um, uh, April. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in September, actually, we um, come back to Sydney again um, to settle in Australia. Mm -hmm. So. Um, when was that? Um, I said in uh, April and September, so mm -hmm. the year is 92 years. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. 92. Um, so then uh, when we came to Sydney, um, uh, the buildings, like tile roof and things, looks not very impressive mm -hmm. compared to Canada. I know. Um, and before that, I was in Germany, so it's, um, it's quite glittering, good, bright, new mm -hmm. buildings and things compared to that. Tiles uh, buildings in Sydney was not that, that attractive. Mm -hmm. so. But when we come back uh, in September and then went inside the buildings, they are pretty, uh -huh. pretty much the same in, yes. in, in Germany or in yeah. Canada. Yeah. Uh, so from outside, people can make some adjustment, <laughs> 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 which may be quite valid. Yes. Because inside could be quite different. Quite different. Mm -hmm. yeah. That applies to many things, yeah. not just the, you know, house and buildings, but yeah. also human being. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so then um, um, we were, I started uh, <coughs> looking for jobs. Luckily, that time, the government used to give some, uh, they call social security benefit at that time, mm -hmm. um, through the DSS. Yep. And we used to get 
is another good money to have our meals and you know yes. uh, rent covered. Yes. Um, that I was on that for um, about four months. Mm -hmm. and then I got few interviews, um, and then the first job offer I I got from Toowoomba, University of Southern Queensland. Um, so I, I had few more interviews left, but my, 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 my wife said that people are not getting jobs. So you got a job, you don't have to try for the others. Just mm -hmm. let's move. Take to it. Yeah. So interestingly, um, I, I told that you know I, I should get a higher step salary than what has yeah. been offered to me, given my experience in um, mm -hmm. uh, publication and so on. My wife said that, oh, the people don't get a job, are you even asking for higher price, higher <laughs> <laughs> salary? I said, look, I deserve it. So I, I contacted the dean, yep. and I, uh, he gave me one step up, yes. salary-wise. Yeah. So we came to Toomba uh, in January. Actually, that was the 26th of January that we came. Oh, okay. Australia Day. Australia Day, yeah. And the next day I started um, university wow. in 1993. Wow. And okay. since then you've been in Toowoomba with your family? Yes, we've been to Toowoomba, but in the middle I was in um, um, sabbatical leave uh, and uh, other leaves to uh, different parts of the Middle East. Uh, okay. In Saudi Arabia, King Fahad University, I, mm -hmm. I visited there. Yeah. And I visited also Bahrain University okay. in Bahrain. Yes. yes. Um, and also uh, visited Sultan Qaboos University in oh. Oman. Okay. So I kind of um, knew the I uh, uh, was able to know the Arab countries a little bit intense, intense and mix with the people and know their culture. So I, I'm a bit lucky. I, I lived in 10 different countries actually. Wow. Yeah. Uh, in Europe, North America, Australia, yeah. Yeah. Asia, Middle yeah. East and so yeah. on. So when we say that you lived in different countries, but on the other hand, usually living in a country like Australia, a multicultural uh, country, you get to see people from different countries, so it gives you that feeling you really traveled overseas and you lived, you experienced the different cultures. Uh, being in Toowoomba long time ago and comparing it to now, in terms of the refugees and the, the new migrants that arrived in Toowoomba, how was the life at that time compared to now? When I came in 93, Toowoomba was quite monoculture. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you won't see um, many colored people, only a handful of them. Yeah. And my wife probably was the one, the women with the head covering. Mm -hmm. And um, people sometimes yell at us when we're walking and, yeah. and so mm -hmm. on. But uh, the diversity started in Toowoomba actually when the South Sudanese refugees started to come. Mm -hmm. um, the community in general welcomed them, but there are some elements in the community that did not um, uh, look at them as a, a positive to our community. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, I I saw a uh, cartoon that um, uh, protecting uh, portraying, portraying a, a, a black boy is raping a white girl. Mm -hmm. And that was distributed in the mailboxes, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So that's some ignorant people. They try to mm -hmm. uh, create a fear of, you know, fear, uh, yeah. unknown or yeah. uh, whatever it is um, by uh, doing something wrong, mm -hmm. by um, being a racist, mm -hmm. uh, and by being um, uh, blaming a, a group of people, um, something that may not have happened yeah. no evidence yeah. for sure mm -hmm. yeah so that's sad at that, that time but mm. gradually people could understand and, and i would uh, um, thank the leaders of tumba these leaders starting from council to federal start at mp and so on mm. and especially the religious leaders mm. uh, of different faith mm -hmm. and not only just one or two faith every faith in tumba mm. mm. They made a huge difference in Toowoomba. Toowoomba mm. didn't change uh, by accident. Mm. Toowoomba had changed by design and by uh, leadership mm. yeah. of some people. Uh, and our current mayor, actually, when um, he declared Toowoomba to be a, a refugee welcome zone, that yeah. was a huge change. Mm. And uh, I think the people have embraced that, yeah. uh, Toowoomba. Yeah. We are proud of that. Yes. And it has given Toowoomba not only diversity, but also economic uh, strength in yeah. Yeah. Uh, a yeah. positive way. Yeah. And I have um, uh, contact with various government offices and organizations 
uh, when they come uh, to talk to me or I go to talk to them, uh, they think Tuomo is a role model, actually. Yeah. Role model of coexistence and respecting mm -hmm. other people's faith. Mm. Um, you probably know that in 2015, Tumba Mosque was burned mm. uh, in yes. January and April. In January, um, the damage was not that much, small mm -hmm. damage, but the cost was paid actually by the churches. Mm -hmm. You will find not many places in this earth yes. that will do that, yes. that uh, uh, people of one faith is going to repair the damage to the place of worship of another faith. Yeah, yeah. But that has happened in Tumba, and I am the witness to that. Yeah, that's extreme. And that's made me proud of, mm. of Tumba. Yeah. Um, in fact, when I came to Tumba in 93, 94, I was introduced with Father Brian Sparksman. Mm -hmm. uh, Father Sparksman was a Catholic priest, mm. and uh, he was an acting bishop after... Um, um, I think Bishop Morris. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's the one actually who started the multi-faith yep. um, uh, conversation and engagement. Yeah. And um, I'm very proud that we worked together from that that time. Yes. So what you see these days, the religious tolerance and things, mm -hmm. started from at that time. Wow. Um, a few years ago, when Brian was uh, in his house, now he's in a uh, nursing home. Um, he he has his 80th birthday, mm -hmm. and he only invited Muslims in that occasion. That right? <laughs> Very interesting man. Yeah. And um, when University of Southern Queensland celebrated the uh, sorry fortieth uh, anniversary of the university, yeah. we had a multi faith prayer. So mm -hmm. we have Muslim, Jews, Christians, you know, Baha'i, and all sort of faith groups. And. Um, Brian told me after that event, one of um, one person from his congregation wrote a letter that since he prayed with you know, people of other faiths, so he is going to quit the church. Oh, really? <laughs> so people are that still, ignorant still at that time. That. Yeah. 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 Ignorant at that sure. time, I would say. Yeah. Um, from my experience of living in many countries and working with many faith groups and cultural groups, mm -hmm. those who are devout in their religion, they never hurt or demonize other people's religion. Mm -hmm. It's the people who are in the frenzy. They, they don't really practice. They don't really know. Mm -hmm. But they want to pretend, pretend that they are more Catholic than the Pope. Okay. So they want to protect their religion yeah. I mean, in the name mm -hmm. of politics or, mm -hmm. or something else. Mm -hmm. This is a fact that you know, unfortunately okay. this is happening. Yeah. So, um, yeah, um, yeah. I, I think I think too much people is lucky and they should... Um, uh, they should appreciate the leadership that that um, has uh, taken them to the level mm. that Tumba can one day be be, be, be a model mm. city of peace and harmony. Mm. That's uh, a big change, by isn't the it? UNESCO. It yeah, is a big change yeah. from when you first arrived yes. to, to where it is, it is now. It is. Yeah. I know that you personally have been really involved as well with, obviously through the organisations that you're involved in and through yeah. the Islamic Society and through the multi faith conversation. What what is it that you personally feel you can you, you can bring that you, that to this helping people feel welcome? Well, look, first of all, uh, <clears throat> if people don't engage with uh, diverse communities, uh, faith communities or cultural communities or ethnic communities, they will have no clue what the other mm -hmm. people are. Yeah. And the other people will always remain other. Yeah. But what message I want you to give to that, um, let us promote that they are us. Yes. That message should be there. Mm. So. They are us only will happen if we know them and they know us. Yes. Yeah. And we see the beauties mm. that they have. Yes. Sometimes we see only the dark side, mm. apparently, you know, mm. from outside. But yeah. we don't see what is the beauty inside. Yeah. So, but when we closely work together, yeah. like Brian and, uh, and me, we work together. At one stage, um, at that time was, um, uh, I think, um, uh, George Pell. George Pell oh, yes. was the um, yes. uh, uh, cardinal. cardinal. Mm -hmm. He went to Florida, mm -hmm. New York, and he said that the Quran is full of violence. Mm -hmm. And I, I phoned uh, Brian and bro I said, Brian, what is happening? <laughs> there is violence in the Quran, there is violence in the Bible and other books as well. Mm -hmm. But 
these books are not to promote violence. It's the yeah. particular context violence is being talked about. Yeah. It's the interpretation people yeah. have. So it is in the particular context you just talked about, but yeah. it's, it's not promoting violence, promoting peace and, and harmony mm. and respect. Mm. Mm. So then uh, Brian said that he is our Catholic terrorist. He's doing the job. So, <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> so and the Brian and told me that the fact that I can trust you and you can trust me, we have traveled a long way. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So that's the way we have to be fellow traveler. Yeah. We yeah. have to put ourselves in other people's shoes. When you see the refu all the refugee, refugee is uh, it's not a word. Um, Refugee is a status of status of human being, yeah. mm -hmm. and the state of um, human being in in the state of refugee, uh, you will never experience, you realize, or appreciate if you never had it in your life. Okay, what they have when they become refugee, nothing. Mm. Yeah. So the the clothes they are wearing, that's it. Mm. But wife and, and children together. There's no milk for the boys and, and mm. the girls. Mm. Uh, mother is uh, hungry. There's no place to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. There's no medicine with it, no food. So as a father, what do you think about yourself? You worth nothing. Yeah. Yeah. As a mother, you are so helpless, you cannot give a, a bread to your, mm. your children. Yeah. And forget about the home and other things. Mm. Yeah. Jobs and with nothing. So they are most helpless people on earth. Mm. And sometimes, unfortunately, this uh, situation, the state of refugee um, is created by act of human being. Mm. Yeah. Sure. Um, and, 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 and war and fighting and yeah. so on, yeah. which the ordinary people probably have nothing to do with. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. But some people are doing it for their own, for their politics, for their political uh, dominations or yeah. military domination. Uh, whatever it is, or economic mm. benefit and mm. so on. Mm. But at the end, the victims are the ordinary, common people, yeah. regardless of their faith or color or ethnicity mm. and, and so on. And that, those people then become refugees. Mm. The um, tragic thing is that the people who destroy a country make people of those countries refugees. Mm. They don't take the responsibility. Yeah. They, they're happy to bomb. They have you to kill people, destroy the buildings, but they're not happy to appreciate the need of these people. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think, one of the human tragedy that we, we observe in this um, century, mm. or this for this civilization. Yeah. Uh, we are responsible for destroying some countries, but we take no responsibility for the people yeah. whom we have actually okay. destroyed. Yeah. Their future, their dream, their life, their nationality, and mm -hmm. everything they had yeah. to be proud of. So. Yeah. Uh, I think that's something we should think seriously. The yeah. other thing is, in many times, the refugee creation is through the war and fight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's something called the arm industry. Mm -hmm. The arms industry. The arm industry. Yeah. If our arm industry was not there, I don't think we will see so many refugees today. Yeah. Okay. Because right. it's their tools that being used to um, create these refugees. Yeah. And nobody's talking about this. Yeah, yeah. Arm industry, what good they're doing for the humanity. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people hungry, they're not really sick, they don't have treatment. A lot mm. of people are not drinking water, a lot of people don't have education. Mm. There's no money for that. Yeah. Yeah. But for arm industry, there's no shortage of money. Yeah. And what is interesting, the same manufacturer or supplier of arm will sell arm to both fighting both parties, yeah. both sides of the parties. Mm. Unfortunately, this is something that we people or the ordinary people don't have power over it. I think what as leaders of communities do is to try and support the people who are called refugees uh, that, that happened by something they didn't have a say in. Yeah. No refugee wants to be a refugee. I'm a exactly. former refugee myself. Exactly. Yeah. But it really comes to the point that you can't do anything, you can't stop wars, but you can support these people who become refugees. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I think Toowoomba has been very successful yeah. in that yes. uh, sense. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, yeah. I wonder, Shah Jahan, just it's fascinating chatting to you and I'm sure we could talk for, for a lot longer <laughs> yeah. but I want to just finally if you could just give some advice for for ordinary people in Toowoomba what can ordinary people in Toowoomba do to help mm -hmm. in in this situation well uh, the first thing is that people um, um, need to be communicated that um, these people are in desperate need they are yeah. here not by their choice yeah. yeah but the situation forced them compelled them yeah uh, and they're as good human beings as we are. Yeah. 
So they need shelter, they need food, they need education, yeah. healthcare, everything else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank actually the Australian government. So it is doing, I mean, it's not enough, of course, mm. but it, it is doing a great job by supporting the refugees. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, may, maybe more refugees would be more uh, better, but mm. uh, what, whatever we are doing is, um, yeah. uh, is good, actually. Yeah. Um, not many countries doing it. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you mentioned, they being multicultural country, Australia, and I have particular interest in multiculturalism. I, I've been... Uh, chair of the multicultural staff network at USQ mm -hmm. for many many time many years. Yeah, I organized many multicultural seminars locally and uh, internationally. Yeah, so multiculturalism is the strength of Australia. It's a common narrative of every Australian. Yeah, who came yesterday or well, who were born in here yeah. Yeah. generations ago. So we have a common narrative. How lucky we are mm. that uh, that I am contributing here to the economy as much as anybody else. Yeah. I, I am proud of Australian as, as, as much as anybody else. Yeah. So that sense of belongingness that that, um, that multiculturalism gives us is a huge strength mm. and the diversity we have. So the Toowoomba people, I think they have already embraced the uh, diversity yeah. and inclusiveness. Yeah. They already respect our differences. Yeah. And as an organizer of um, International Food Festival. Yep. Uh, we have been doing last seven years. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, eighth year this year. Next year will be ninth year. Um, I can see more and more people are coming and opening mm. Um, mm. Yeah, themselves to um, and guests yeah. um, and and to talk to other people. Yeah. Um, and the other thing, the the, the policymakers uh, need to um, do some. Uh, more work in this area as well, sure. uh, and uh, the leaders. Yeah. I think they are doing, but uh, a bit more can be bit done. More that, can be done. Uh, yeah. that these people are not taking anybody's job. No, no. So <laughs> basic, are, yeah. Yes. So basically, mm -hmm. get involved. I guess is what exactly. you're saying, right? Yeah. Just, just go to these know events, go and meet people, yeah. Yeah. have a chat. Yeah. yeah, I think in what really belonging, or to give a sense, sense of belonging to a former refugee or even a migrant, is I think it, it's a double sided. It comes from the refugees mm. and the migrants and the resilience they have, also from the the Australian themselves being yeah. supportive. Mm. Yeah. So that's mm. really important Fantastic. to know. Shaja Khan, it's been fabulous talking to you. I wish we had longer, oh, but yeah. we're out of time. Yeah. Thank you so much no, for coming. Thank you pleasure. so much. You're welcome. Well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, in, in interview with Shah Jahan Khan. It was really interesting, I think, mm -hmm. Sorgul, to hear his perspective over the years, uh, talking about when he first arrived in Toowoomba as being a very monocultural yep. community and uh, over time how that has changed and, and welcoming refugees. Mm -hmm. And I thought um, actually really encouraging, really hope, full of hope, that kind of a conversation. Yeah, it absolutely is, Warren. I also liked when he talked about... Um, how the religious leaders at that time when yeah. he arrived in Toowoomba a uh, long time ago yes. were trying to bring the communities together. Yes. And I don't, I don't think it has changed a lot yeah. over years. Yeah. We're still, we still have kept that thing in Toowoomba. Yeah. And yeah. I think all the religious and non-religious leaders in yeah. Toowoomba are doing a great job in trying to support the refugees, no matter where they are from yeah. or their faith yeah, exactly right. Also, I, I remember from that conversation something that impacted me when uh, Shah Jahan was talking particularly about, you know, the refugees, it's it's not their choice, mm -hmm. right? And um, obviously he's very passionate about some of the um, yep. the political issues and, and, mm -hmm. and things like that. And, you know, that's great to see people with passion and commitment to make change. But it's it's good to to just remember, you know, I'm not a refugee by choice, and you know, I'm not a refugee for my whole. I wasn't born a refugee, mm -hmm. and you know what I mean. It was a circumstance that happened completely out of my control, mm -hmm. and deep down inside, I'm a human being. That's right. Yeah. And I know what he said that as a refugee, probably it's really difficult for parents because they are the responsible ones. Mm. And when you see your child is hungry or or cold and you can't do anything because you are yourself a yeah. refugee and you need support yeah. that's very heartbreaking to see yeah. and feel yeah and yeah i understand what that means i probably haven't been through that situation but i i am being a former refugee i know how it feels yeah to be a refugee yeah uh, 
probably it's much more difficult to be yeah. a parent yes. and a refugee at the same time. I can imagine. I can imagine. Well, we hope you enjoyed that conversation as well. And we look forward to meeting with you again on the next episode of Who Is My Neighbour? Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of Who Is My Neighbour? To learn more about the work of You Belong Australia, just head to youbelong.org.au and find out all the ways you can get involved and empower refugees to integrate and thrive. Lastly, would you help support this podcast simply by sharing it with others? You can also write a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify or subscribe to us on YouTube. Yes, we are a video podcast as well. Well, thanks again for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Who Is My Neighbour?